Hi there and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to complete this month's training on steel fabrication, closing with the final stage of production, which is material preparations and coatings. Now there's many different types of steel coatings that might be required on your project, based off the location, serviceability, and type of structure that you're building. And often these different coatings will require different material preparations before you can apply them. And today we're going to discuss all you need to know about them, so stay tuned. For nearly the last 75 years, the standards for material preparations have been produced by two organizations. The first and the oldest of those two being the National Association of Corrosion Engineers, otherwise known as NACE. And their standards typically oversee the production on pipeline and heavy industrial projects. Alternatively, the Society for Protective Coatings, which goes by the acronym of their formerly known Steel Structures Painting Council, or SSPC, produces standards that typically govern on the production of steel buildings and bridges. And what you should know is that in July of 2020, these two organizations merged, producing the Association of Materials Protections and Performance, or AMPP. Now, since their mergers, none of these codes have been changed, but as revisions do come out, these new copies will receive new AMPP designations. And in our time today, we're only going to be able to discuss a few. So first, we'll talk about SSPC's SP1, SP2, and SP3 and how they interrelate. And then we'll talk about SSPC SP6, which co-qualifies NACE number three. SSPC SP1, SP2, and SP3 are among the most common requirements in structural steel. In fact, in the American Institute of Steel Construction's 303 Code of Standard Practice for Steel Buildings and Bridges, in section 6.5.2, it identifies SSPC SP2 as the standard for structural steel unless noted otherwise in the contract documents. Now, SP1 is solvent cleaning. SP2 is hand tool cleaning and SP3 is power tool cleaning. And these codes or standards are not at all hard to follow, but I do bring them up together because both SP2 and SP3 require the initial performance of SP1 and most people tend to forget that. Now to summarize these codes quite simply, they're only there to ensure the removal of loose foreign material, such as stratified rust, weld slag, loose paint, and dirt. SSPC SP6, or NACE number three, is commercial blast cleaning, and it's also a very common requirement. It's not quite as lenient as SP14, which is NACE number eight, but it's nowhere near as restrictive as SPs five and 10, which are NACEs number one and two. This standard also requires the initial performance of SP1 solvent cleaning. Now it does not require that you get down to what's called as white or near white base material, but you should remove all coatings and contaminants with an allowable 33% shadowing. Welcome back. And next we're going to talk about material coatings. Now if the steel that you're fabricating is going to be either embedded in concrete or receive spray on fireproofing, you'll be shipping your steel to the job site without anything on it. But all other steel requires some level of protection from the elements. And the most commonly used coating is red oxide primer. Now red oxide primer is a specially developed paint that serves two purposes. The first being that it acts as a rust inhibitor meaning that it stops the oxidization process, which produces rust on the surface of your steel and prevents further deterioration. And secondly, it produces an acceptable base coat primer that's compatible with most top coat systems. And while we're on the issue of discussing paint compatibility, I want to again take a look at a section of AISC 303 Code of Standard Practice for Steel Buildings and Bridges. Now in section 6.5.3, it reads that when the term shop coat, shop paint, or other equivalent term is used with no paint system specified, 
the fabricator standard shop paint shall be applied. And just above that in the commentary of section 6.5.2, it reads that since the fabricator does not control the selection of the paint system, the compatibility of the various components of the total paint system, or the length of exposure of the shop coat, the fabricator cannot guarantee the performance of the shop coat or any other part of the system. Instead, the fabricator is responsible only for accomplishing the specified surface preparation and for applying the shop coat or coats in accordance with the contract documents. So if any issues or questions arise concerning the compatibility of your shop coat with the top coat or finished paint system that's designated by the architect, you need to push that back onto the design team as it's their problem to investigate and resolve that matter and not yours. And next, let's talk about galvanizing. And lastly, we're gonna talk about hot dip galvanizing. Now there's several stages to the galvanization process and most of them are a series of cleansings before the steel finally gets dried and then dipped into a bath of hot molten zinc at approximately 840 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that molten zinc will chemically join or alloy with the exterior of the base material, securing the zinc as the outer coating, which of course doesn't weather or rust. Now due to the high temperatures of the zinc bath, if you're using either hollow or tubular sections that are capped on the end, you're going to either need to cut or drill ventilation holes into opposing ends of that assembly. This will allow for the molten zinc to flow through the internals of the structure, but more importantly, it's going to provide ventilation for the hot air and pressure that builds up inside of that assembly. Without these, your steel members could quite literally explode under pressure, and nobody wants to see that happen. Thanks for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and then check out our website where you can subscribe to receive videos like this every single week, bringing you only the best in steel construction education. And while you're there, be sure to check out our list of courses, providing you a deeper and more intensive study on topics just like this one. You see here at the SBC Group, it's our mission to help you know the most so that you can do your best. And finally, if you should have any questions or concerns about where you're going to spend eternity and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be glad to help you with that too. Thank you and God bless.